today we're going to be going over the basics of building a base in Rust. I'm not going to be giving you guys any one base to build, but telling you what you should consider anytime you're building a base so you can go out and create your own monstrosities. Now, for those of you who are too drunk to see the screen in front of you, you're holding up two fingers and seeing 10, this is probably what you want to know. This is a blueprint. That's what you use to put down things. This is a hammer. That's what you use to upgrade things. Now get out there and go nuts. You don't need to worry about a tool cupboard because you're not going to remember what server or where you put your base. So go out there, go nuts, and hopefully tomorrow morning isn't too bad. So for everybody else, the, this is sort of the basics to building a base in Rust. First off, you obviously want to put down a foundation. And then on that foundation, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put down a tool cupboard. What a tool cupboard does is it basically makes sure that nobody can build on your plot or on your area. So when you put this down and you authorize yourself, no one can now build in this area that you've occupied, this area that consists of your base. So tool cupboard is sort of the keys to entry, the... The keys to the kingdom, right? Essentially, if someone takes over this tool cupboard, what's gonna happen is they can build on your base so they can build a bunch of doors around your doors and then slowly crack into your base. You don't want this, so your tool cupboard should be the one thing that is protected above all else. If you're wondering what loot you should protect, what things you should protect, it's a tool cupboard. Protect your loot rooms, but the tool cupboard should take precedent over everything. This is why when you're looking at what to upgrade, the first thing you want to do is this piece right here in the walls surrounding your tool cupboard. Now, the reason you want to upgrade this base is because if this base, if this sort of base, I say base, but if this um, foundation piece breaks, everything on top of it disappears, including your tool cupboard. At this point, a raider can put down their own tool cupboard and now they own your base. You don't want this. So... Yeah, upgrade that first. So let's go ahead and upgrade that. Usually stone works, but if you're really paranoid, you can go all the way to armored. Traditionally, because it's very hard to break into a base like this, it's very hard to break that base piece. By the time someone's over here, they can already just break into your tool cupboard. So a stone floor is usually good enough, and that's gonna keep the build cost down. Now, when we're talking about tool cupboards and everything like that, the first thing to remember is to lock it. When you lock your tool cupboard, what this means is a raider's probably gonna have to blow up your tool cupboard to actually get access to it. Now, if you are a bit of a cheeky bastard, what you can do is leave your tool cupboard unlocked and hope that the raider doesn't click this button. So if the raider just takes control of the tool cupboard and doesn't clear the authorized list, it means that you can still build on this base that they've just raided. So if someone comes in, they make your, their ba or your base their own, you can come and wall them in. They're going to wake up in the morning and be very disappointed with what's happened. So now when it comes to tool cupboards and space maximization and everything like that, one thing you want to do is likely build your tool cupboard after you put up these walls. Because what you want to do is you want to align this tool cupboard with the back wall and the side wall. This gives you the maximum amount of room to place other things. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. Now, generally when I'm building a tool cupboard, the one thing I like to do is upgrade everything around it and sort of wall this in so that it's safe. Also, when you're building wood walls, keep in mind that there's a hard side, which is this side, and a soft side, which is this side. The soft side is gonna be easier to break, so um, make sure that's facing in or to the hardest place to get, right? If someone's gonna be attacking you, they're probably not attacking from the inside, they're gonna be attacking from the outside. So unless you're a complete dunce, you probably want this to be facing out and the easy soft side of the wall to be facing in. Now, when it comes to doors and everything like that, this door, right, a double door, versus a single door, it really doesn't matter. They're gonna take the same amount of cost to break into. So if you've got a wood door, a wood double door, or wood single door, it really doesn't matter. The cost to break in is the same. But one thing I do like about the double doors is what you can do is you can place down something called a garage door, and that's gonna lift all the way up. So what's gonna happen is here, I'm gonna go ahead and do this right now. Let's pull open the garage door right here. Let's craft it. When you put this down, now watch what's gonna happen. I can click this. It's going to open nice and neat like that. So now it's sort of, um, it's a nice, it just feels nicer. It makes everything feel more open. Um, anyways, also when you're building a double door, always make sure you upgrade this thing. Upgrade it to stone. It's a mistake everybody makes. They forget to upgrade from wood, but then someone's going to come in, poke that out, and now you're sort of screwed. So here we go. We've got our basic sort of area right here. This is your inner sanctum. This is the one part of your base that you don't want anyone to get to. Um, so that's the one part of your base that you don't want anyone to get to, right? So what you're going to want to do is you've got it sort of set up like this. And you've got your little cube that's sort of supposed to be impenetrable. 
Now, if you're wondering, do you have to build something like this? No, there's a lot of sort of cool ways that you can go about doing things. You can make bases that are virtually impenetrable by doing something like this, where you take a box, you wall everything in completely, and then you're gonna put something called a drop box on it. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is a Dropbox. And what happens when you've got a Dropbox is now someone can basically, if you align it right, you're gonna have one end where you can open it up and get a bunch of stuff. You see here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 slots right here for loot. And then on the other side of the Dropbox, you can put one piece of loot at the same time. So assuming you've got your tool cupboard here, a sleeping bag here, you can spawn into this little sort of cube get everything from your Dropbox, stock your tool cupboard, and now it is literally the most impenetrable that you can get a sort of one by one box in Rust. If you are worried about your base being raided, this is sort of the ultimate way to prevent that. And if you put this Dropbox inside of your base, it's even harder because now someone's not gonna exactly know where to raid. So this is another thing that you've gotta remember in Rust. If someone knows where your tool cupboard is, they can figure out how easy it's gonna to be to raid you. So for instance, if you do something like this, this foundation right here, this is your basic sort of two by one. So the way this works is you've got an airlock and the goal of an airlock is basically if all else fails and someone gets into part of your base, they're not gonna be able to get all the way or go deep on you. Now I know go deep has other connotations in different circles, but in this case, we're talking about getting deep into your base. So what you're gonna notice here is we can put these doors on like this, and assuming you've got your locks on and everything like that, if you make these doors open the right way, someone won't be able to get all the way into your base, even if you have both doors open. So you can see this is the wrong way because now I can just run through and get into your base, and that's no good, so let's unlock the door. Let's go ahead and pick up that lock. Let's pick up the door. So if you're wondering to pick up a lock, you unlock the lock and pick it up. Locks do now automatically get placed or automatically get locked when you put them down. So that's very cool. Um, and to pick up a door, you just basically open a door and hold E. And now you've picked up your door. So now the ideal way to do this, okay, let's just set this up here for those of you who are wondering, is you have your doors facing, oh, let me get this right here. You've one door facing like this, so it's gonna open out and now it's hard to get in or hard to get out, right? And then you're gonna have another door, you have another door that's sort of facing in like this. So now what's gonna happen is if someone is attacking you, you've got this little section right here that you can peek out of, but you can't get out and they can't get in. If they do kill you and things are getting too tough, you can sort of sneak over here, close that door, close this door. So now from the inside of your base, you can basically still control everything. And someone from the outside, the nice thing here is they don't really get that much of a peek on you, right? Like if they really angle themselves well, they can just shoot barely into your base. But ideally in a two by one, your tool cupboard is gonna be very far like right here. So they can't destroy your tool cupboard and then box you in. That this is, that's like literally the worst case scenario. This is what you wanna avoid above all costs. You're being raided and someone can just do something like this to you because now you're boxed in, you're stuck and you're sort of screwed. Now, if you're also thinking this is just twig cereal, obviously I can break it down. If someone's raiding you, they're gonna upgrade the walls. I'm just doing this for ease of use. So let me get back to the point here. With a two by one, the way you wanna think of it is your tool cupboard's gonna be here. Everybody knows this. So it doesn't make any sense to really overly fortify here because let's say you do a ton of like armored walls here, but then this wall's stone. Everybody knows this is where your tool cupboard is. But if you go ahead and you use some basic building knowledge and stuff like that, you can put down some sort of weird foundation and maybe it's gonna be sort of hard for someone to get in, and now they don't know exactly where your tool cupboard is, and that's gonna make you harder to raid and less likely to be raided. And the goal in Rust is obviously to not be raided or to be able to defend yourself against a raid if it does occur. So that's sort of the basics of building. The tool cupboard is the thing you wanna protect. When it comes to building extra sort of storage spaces and things like that, so let's say you've got a two by one. I'm gonna teach you guys a few tricks here. So let's say you've got a two by one like this. Let's go ahead and take our tool cupboard. Let's stick that down right here. So again, you can see I put the walls down. Now I'm gonna put the tool cupboard down. You line it up with that back wall. It's super tight, look at that. It's as tight as your, no, we're not gonna go there. We're not gonna go there. Um, but yeah, you put this super like close into the wall and now what you can do is you can go out to the other side, put down a foundation like this. You can build a half wall. You put down a floor triangle. So you've got this awkward looking thing. Hold on one sec, that looks like this. But on the other side, you're gonna be able to put down 
a floor triangle like this. Okay, so now let's watch what's, whenever, sorry about that. Watch what's gonna happen. We're gonna destroy this. Oop, we're not gonna flip that. We're gonna destroy this. We're gonna destroy this. But this still remains. So now if you're looking to put boxes in, you've got all that more, all that much more space to put down boxes. So now what's gonna happen is if we type in box, we're gonna craft a bunch of boxes. Craft, craft, craft. We're gonna drop that box down right here. And you can see that we can put boxes under, oop, hit R to rotate, by the way. We can put boxes under this sort of um, triangle, and we can also put them over. So let's, uh, so there you go. You can see this, how it's like nicely lined up like that. So just keep that in mind, right? So you can actually put a lot into a loot room if you really design everything sort of nicely. And there's all sorts of other little sort of tricks that you can use. So now let's say we're gonna put down the garage door like this. You can sort of let the boxes stick out a bit. And what's gonna be nice about this is you can access these boxes without, um, without having to open the door. So let's say you're in a clan or something like that and you want your tool cupboard to be sort of inaccessible but there's some loot you want everybody to have access to. You can put a solo lock on this which is just this key lock that I'm using right here as opposed to a coded lock. So for those of you guys who don't know, this is a coded lock. A coded lock uses a code. Those are gonna be easier to raid. They cost a little bit more. They cost metal fragments to make and they let multiple people into the door. For a lock like this, if you place the lock, you do not need a key or anything like that to open it, which is nice. Um, if you wanna let your friends in, you can make keys, but I would not recommend doing that because if the keys get lost, now people can get in. But anyways, let's say you don't really trust everybody, but you wanna give them access to some of your stuff. You can do something like this where it sticks out. It's also nice just for ease of use. So maybe you have your tool cupboard right back here, but you have a few boxes poking out. Um, but yeah, generally loot rooms, this is how people do it. They'll use a square box and you can put multiple boxes in here. If the tool cupboard wasn't here, I believe you could put three boxes up top, three boxes down below. You can do some other crazy stuff and there's ton of, tons of videos on that so don't really bother with that, but that's a nice little trick right there. Now back to the building. The basic thing with building is you just wanna make your base as hard to get into as possible and you wanna make it as unrateable as possible. So if you wanna do something sort of cool, you can do something like this, okay? And this is a nice sort of basic trap base. And what you've got here is you've got this wall right here. You put a nice little floor tile above here and you can do this with any piece of flooring. And now you've got this under section. So what's gonna happen is when someone comes into your base, they're gonna come in through the typical route, they drop down and now you've got another door here that's gonna lead to your tool cupboard. But under here, you can put a nice little shotgun trap. So now what's gonna happen is when someone drops down, they are greeted by a shotgun trap, which is gonna promptly shoot the shit out of them. And they will not be too happy when that happens. And now they're gonna go home crying because they just dropped down, they got shot, and if they were very unlucky, they dropped pretty far down. And now they're shot and they can't even get to their body. So they basically lose all this loot that they came in here with, and they can't even get access to this door, which leads to your tool cupboard or further into your base. So if you do a lot of stuff like this, it's just gonna make it very annoying for someone to raid your base. What you don't wanna do is just something like that. So shotgun trap this place down the floor that's easy to access. Someone can just shoot it from an angle. It's not gonna do any damage to them and they're just gonna run through it like it's nothing. It will alert your neighbors to the fact that your base is being raided, but these are not good defensive sort of shotgun traps. A defensive shotgun trap is something like this. It's hard to get to and it's easy to shoot someone. So what's gonna happen is if someone's raiding your base, this is the view they get. The second they drop down, that's the view they get and the shotgun trap kills them. So if there's nothing for them to stand on, nothing for them to jump on, they just fall down, shotgun trap kills them, and they've gotta keep doing this until the shotgun trap runs out of ammo. They can use a grenade, try and ricochet stuff into here, but it makes it a lot harder. And the goal with raiding isn't to make an unraidable base, because the truth of the matter is, if you ever see a YouTube video telling you this is an unraidable base, unless that video is published by Serial Overdrive, they're lying. There's no such thing as an unraidable base. There's a lot of tricks you can use to make your base harder to raid, but it's impossible to make an unraidable base. So this is a trick to just make your base harder to raid, and that's the end goal of anything, right? You wanna protect your loot and protect your base. So if you got sort of a basic uh, base entry, you might have something like this. 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to have something called honeycomb. So what honeycombs are is they're just these little triangle pieces that make it harder to raid a base. So what you want to consider when you're making a bigger base is how many rockets it's going to take to get into a base. So, you know, let's let's take something like this, okay? Just a four by four, right? Basic four by four. I'm not going to put doors on. I'm not going to upgrade it. But obviously, you know, armored's the hardest to break through. Then you've got sheet metal. Then you've got stone. Then you've got wood. Okay, most stuff you can leave in stone. If you get really advanced, you might want to do sheet metal and you might want to have sort of an armored core. That's ideal, okay? Now, the way this is going to work is if someone knows your tool cupboards here, they're going to just get through to your base the easiest way possible. So if these walls are exposed, someone just blasts through these walls and bing, bang, boom, they're in your base. Now, if you want to make it a little bit harder, you can put down something like this. So this is called a honeycomb. And what this means is now they've got to break through this wall. Okay. So they've got to break through this wall. And then they've also got to break through this wall to get access. Right? So obviously now things just got harder for them. And that's always the goal. So again, let's, let's throw down a tool cupboard here so I actually have privileges to destroy things. All right, so that's the goal. You make it harder. More walls they have to break through, the harder it is. Generally, doors are going to be the easiest way to get into things, but once you've got a couple doors deep, you're going to want to start putting in honeycombs. Also, the nice thing about honeycombs is if you use a window, it's going to be almost just as hard for someone to break in, but now you've got extra storage space out here. So that's how I'd recommend doing honeycombs. You just do windows, and then you put your honeycombs down like this. So basically, you've just got these here, these here, these here. And now it's a lot harder to break into. Someone's got to break through two of these and get in. Now, with rockets and explosives, you can do something called splash damage. So someone could damage two walls that are meeting, and they can do the same things for the ceiling. So now let's go ahead and craft a ladder. Um, in game, this is how you're going to use it to get onto your base. Uh, for those guys wondering, too, I'm using a build server. That's why it's so easy for me to build. Makes it a lot nicer for videos like this because I don't need to worry about farming up resources to do all this stuff to show you guys. So now we've got the top of your base, okay? And again, the same thing, the same logic applies here. You want to make it as hard as possible to get into your base. A good raider, they're going to have access to all outside areas of your base, whether it's a floor, whether it's a ceiling, whether it's a wall. If it is facing outward, the raider has access to it. So what you don't want to do is honeycomb your base. Okay, so let's just do this for ease of... Uh, moving up here, and then leave this wide open, especially this. This is your tool cupboard, right? So you want to make it as hard as possible for someone to break into. So what you can do first is you've got these. So these, you don't need even, even to use half walls. You can use low walls. And what is going to happen is if you do something like this, now a rocket cannot do damage to multiple floor or multiple ceiling tiles. They've got to pick one, right? So the raider has to pick raiding here, 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 whatever, right? Typically, if you were a smart raider, what you do is you'd attack right in the middle, do damage to this tile right here, and this tile right here. With this wall right here, now they can't do that. So all you need to do with these is upgrade them to stone. And if you want to get even more advanced, what you can do, let's go ahead and do this, you can actually put a floor onto your sort of top. Now you can't put a floor onto these walls right here. So what you're going to want to do is leave some room to upgrade to a half wall, right? So maybe the outside of your base is going to be a half wall like this. And now once your base is sort of, you know, a little bit better, you want to make it a little bit harder to raid, you can do something like this. And now all of a sudden it just got that much harder for someone to raid. They've got to break through this roof and then they've got to deal with these things. So now even once they've broken through this roof, so this roof they can just go through by hitting right here, hitting in the middle, but they've still got to break through these two right here. It just makes such a frustrating job for raiders and that guarantees they pretty much won't bother with the top of your base. Um, another thing to remember too is you can always use this for extra storage space if you're really smart about buildings. So you might do some sort of like ladder or staircase that you can use to get up. When it comes to making ladders and staircases, you can be sort of lame about it and just use a traditional staircase. Or what you can do is sort of like a jumping staircase. I forget what people call it. Who really cares, right? Um, but what you're going to do is just something like this. You're going to do a half wall at the back or a half wall at one side. 
put those down and then you put a floor. Usually I like to use triangles just because I feel like it's easier. So now what's gonna happen is, let's say, here we go, let's just draw the base right here. Get a base like this. This is gonna be your ladder right here. So you jump onto this tile. And then up here, you're gonna have just your second floor. Boop. So you can see sort of how that works, right? You just jump like that. And there you go. That's your, that's your basic sort of staircase in Rust. Pretty, pretty sort of simple to build. In addition to this, like what we've been going over before, you can do some cool stuff where you can put a shotgun trap under here. Or let's say actually, if you really want to do it with a shotgun trap, probably the best way to do it be to do something like this. So now someone that wants to get into your base, let's just let's just set the full thing up, right? Because you guys probably want to know this. Um, so the full base, this is how it's gonna look. You can have this right here. Let's throw down your garage door, which seems to have disappeared on me. Go craft another one. So you put down your garage door. That is not what we wanted to do. So what you don't want to do is build it incorrectly. Uh, give me a sec here, folks. So you can see what I did wrong there, right? I hope everybody can see that. So what you actually want to do, put down your garage door down here. You can put it in like this. Now you've got your garage door. You can't do this with double doors. You need to do it with the garage door, by the way. But you can jump. Now you can sort of jump up top, I think. Jump up top. And under here, you can put a shotgun trap. So now what you did is you made a nice little staircase and you made it all that much harder to raid you. One thing to remember too with shotgun traps is you can put them up top as well as down below. So you can do sort of a double whammy like this. And now someone drops down and they get obliterated. So that's like a double edged sword, right? Like you can have your sort of your tool, not your tool cupboard. Yeah, you put your tool cupboard downstairs, upstairs. Maybe that's how you access your bases. So this is something that a lot of people have done. They'll do sort of your downstairs. This is your fortified area. And then to get up to your base, you just sort of take a nice little entryway staircase, right? So you have some steps set up. You go up the steps onto your base. Then you drop down into the main part of your base. And this is where loot and everything like that is. And the up top is sort of your easy to access area that doesn't really have too much. This is where you put your blueprint table. This is where you put your furnaces, things like that. So there's a lot of different designs that you can take advantage of in Rust. And generally the way you want to do it is the more space you've got to put things, the better off you are. Um, one thing I like to do is sort of use small form bases. The more stuff you can fit into a smaller area, the less likely someone is to raid you because if someone sees a two by one they typically think typical two by one they don't think that there's going to be an extra sort of layer in here where people can build things also one thing to keep in mind is that people can pull out tools see stability see things like that and they can get some sort of idea for how your base is built so if you're thinking like oh i can put down two half walls and nobody will notice no they can pull out a hammer and do this so remember your raider is going to know where your half walls is are so don't accidentally expose anything like that you can also use sort of things like trapdoors and a bunch of cool stuff like that to, you know, make it hard for someone to figure out where your um, where your tool cupboard and where all your loot is. This is one of the things that a lot, this is something that a lot of people sort of forget about, right? When they're making a base, they forget that if you use a base base that everybody's seen on YouTube, raiders are also going to know where sort of your base is located, okay? They're gonna know where your tool cupboard is. They're gonna know generally where loot rooms are. Even if it's one of these huge bases that has multiple areas for your tool cupboard, a raider is still gonna know what to expect. If what you wanna do, in my opinion, is make a sound base that holds up, but also looks unique. Because when a base looks unique, a lot of people are gonna be lazy and they're not gonna bother to raid it. So instead of doing something, you know, crazy maybe you can do a base with like a courtyard and no you don't want to do that um but you you can do all sorts of interesting things with the bases so don't just follow youtube tutorials telling you how to build something use all the tools that you've learned to build something cool build something unexpected build something that the enemy is not going to know quite how to handle because those are the bases that last the longest and those are the bases that are actually interesting to see too many servers are just generic bases when in reality you can build all sorts of crazy stuff in rust so let's just go ahead and tell you what 
let's just go ahead and build a base sort of ad hoc right here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of take everything that I've talked about here and create the ideal base for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use honeycombs right here to make the base sort of protected. But what I also wanna do is I want that entry level to be on the top floor. So we're gonna put stuff like this in. So we've got our honeycombs. This protects us right here. And actually, let's go ahead and make a elevator. Let's make a ladder, not a ladder. Let's make a way to get up, okay? But first off, we do need to put down a tool cupboard. So now what we could do is a typically in a base like this, you're gonna put your tool cupboard right about here, okay? But if we wanna make things interesting, if we wanna make things a little bit more difficult, maybe what we wanna do is put windows in here and we'll put our tool cupboard in one of these honeycombs. Now, typically, a lot of people are going to say this isn't what you want to do. And it really isn't because if someone knows where your tool cupboard is, they just blow through one of these walls and bing, bang, boom, they've got access to your base. But if they don't know where your tool cupboard is, now things get more difficult for them. And the fact of the matter is, since um, this is a base design that nobody's ever seen before, they're probably not going to know which wall to blow through. So let's just go ahead and put it in like this. Now someone gets in and all of a sudden they've got to deal with this window and this extra sort of barrier to entry. And maybe you've even made things bad on them. This inside wall, it's armored. The outside wall's all stone, but this wall's armored. Now they're really dealing with something, okay? Um, so always, you know, keep people thinking, keep raiders on their toes. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this to make a staircase. So instead of doing that sort of stupid thing that I showed you where I just had a typical square. Instead, I'm gonna use a triangle foundation because that takes up less space. And this is gonna be the jump. This is gonna be how you get up, okay? So you jump up here, and this is gonna take you onto the second level of your base. So let's go ahead, put this in. And this is gonna be the top floor, but this is also gonna be the entry level, let's say. So let's make it nice and uh, interesting here. So you've got that. Let's put this in. Oh, building is it's causing me some issues here. Hold on one sec. I don't know why this is, there we go. Sometimes things just don't click and it's hard to get. All right, there we go. All right, so now we've got that basic entry level to our base. So this is gonna be where we're gonna enter from and up here maybe this is where you wanna have your entry point. So what you might wanna do here is just to make everything a little bit easier. You can put a window here, window here. You're going to put doors here. This is going to be sort of our entry point. And just to keep things simple, we're going to do it like this. Maybe on top of the honeycomb, you actually want to put something, especially since we put our tool cupboard right here. So since we put a tool cupboard, cupboard right here, we don't want to be complete idiots. Let's go ahead and do it like this. And let's put a window in here too, just so people think that it's just generic tool cupboard territory, right? So now here we go, this is, this is our basic base right here. And this is gonna be where our entryway is. And what we're gonna do too, let's put that there, let's put that there. Now we're gonna put some sort of, we can put a stairway here, I guess. Um, I'm wondering if this is the way to go, if there's a, not a better way to do this. Uh, so, hmm. yeah, let's go ahead and make things a little bit more interesting here. Let's put down a triangle foundation. Put down a half wall. We'll put down the floor triangle right here. So you get into the base, you just jump up there, jump up here, okay? And the advantage here is like, let's say you're being raided and you just wanna lock things off for a bit, you can just sort of put something on top of this and maybe that gives you a little bit more time. Um, so now the nice thing about this setup, right? For those of you wondering, what you can do right here is you put windows in. So now you can see if someone's door camping. You jump up, you can see if they're door camping you. Now you still can't see around here and here, so someone could take advantage of that. But obviously you can put windows on these two sides and now someone's gonna be able to, you know, now, now it's gonna be a little bit harder to door camp you, okay? So this is the base. This is sort of the base that we've created. And it, it's something I don't think you're gonna find many guides on. It's something that looking at it, it does look rather weird, rather interesting. Players aren't gonna know exactly what to expect and that's what you want, right? You want a base that when someone looks at it, they say, what is this thing and how should I be rating it? Because if they don't know how to rate it, it's going to be just all that much harder for them to figure out what's what, where to go and everything like that.
Now they are gonna be able to figure out certain things. For instance, right here, if they use their hammer, they'll know that this is a half wall. And that means that there might be something interesting here. So maybe they're gonna, you know, maybe they're gonna be looking at this area, thinking it's a loot room, thinking that there's something weird going on, but they break in and it's just a stairwell. Sucks for them. So now they jump in, they go through your base, they come here. You've got maybe a few things here, no big deal. They can break through if they want. Right here, you've just got their lookout, your lookout. So they probably won't even bother going in here, especially if they see these windows. So what you want to do is if you have an area like that where you know people aren't going to go or probably aren't going to raid, maybe just out of sight, you build some sort of like low box. So if you look at that basic box that I've got there, that's a little too high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to craft sort of a, fall, a smaller form box like this, you just put it right here. Now the advantage of this, you can jump on top of it and that gives you a nice view down. But also, if someone's thinking about raiding it, when they're on the outside looking in, you can't really see anything. Maybe, maybe if they're really smart, they're gonna jump up and they're gonna see that box, but most raiders are just gonna run right past that. They're not gonna realize there's something here. So maybe you keep one set of gear here and you hope that if someone raids your base, they just don't notice that. So yeah, you've got this set up, this is out of the way. Again, let's just pretend all these are stone. They come down here, they drop down into your stairwell, go here. Now obviously one thing you're gonna wanna do is you've got this here, this here. So when they drop down, what's gonna happen is you've got your doorway, okay? They blow through this doorway, let's just push this up. And now this is what they're gonna be exposed to, this area right here. And do you guys know what you do with this? shotgun trap that's right it just got all that much harder for them to break into your base because now they drop down go here boom they're shot so now they've got to deal with the shotgun trap once they get through the shotgun trap they've got another door to blow through and once they blow through this door they realize that there was an easier way to do this the whole time but because this was not a youtube base because you didn't copy exactly what i did here they don't know exactly what's going on right your tool cupboard could be here it could be here it could be here Maybe you put it here, maybe you put it here, maybe, you know, who knows, right? But the base thing is, you use all these ideas, you put them together and create something unique. Your base doesn't need to be, so a lot of people, they focus on the base that's like the hardest to get to, the hardest to raid if someone uses the perfect raid formula. But in my opinion, one of the things that matters the most is just disguising where certain things are, okay? If someone doesn't know where your tool cupboard is, it's all that much harder for them to get access to that tool cupboard. And now if they get into a base, this is the worst. If they get into a base, they get down to that last foundation and they see something like this. They see something like this. Okay. Where is that drop box? Um, let's, let's go ahead and make that again. They see the drop box. Now they're going to be pissed. Now they're going to be like, why did I even bother? Because they basically got through. They did all this work. Okay. They went through and the drop boxes. Yeah, whatever. The drop box is facing the wrong way. So let's, let's go ahead and fix that because that's it's not good for video. So they get through your base. They've come down to the bottom. And what are they greeted by? They're greeted by a fully armored cube. And what is the only way to get into this cube? The only way to get resources in is through this drop box. And now you might be wondering how do you get resources out? Um, it's simple, just add a drop box on the other side. So you might have a base like this, right? This could be this could be the base, right? Like you could just use a four by four and you've just got one area to take things out, one area to put things in. Someone raids it, they get to that cube and life is gonna be pretty miserable for them. It's not gonna be fun. And what you also wanna do is you wanna disguise these outer walls. So if you got something like this, you probably do want a honeycomb because if someone sees these armored parts, they're gonna know this is probably where your tool cupboard is. But if you honeycomb, they're probably not gonna be able to get to that point where they can see your tool cupboard. So now all of a sudden everything's stone and they've gotta break through the honeycombs if they wanna figure out exactly where things are and they're most likely gonna just go through the front doors. They get to this and they realize that they are dealing with an armored cube. So yeah, there, there's a lot of things you can do in Rust to make your base pretty hard to deal with. And the, the one thing to remember is that end game clans are gonna have a lot of explosives and a lot of them just aren't gonna care. They're gonna raid bases because it's interesting. They're gonna raid bases because it's fun. They're not raiding bases looking for loot. And when you're dealing with someone that does not care about what they're getting, they don't care about profit, they don't care about making anything off of a raid, you're dealing with an irrational human being who's gonna blow your stuff up because they can. 
And there's no way to defend against that. But yeah, that's sort of a very long tutorial going over base building and everything like that in Rust. Hopefully some of the information here you guys do find helpful. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to ask them down below. If you made it all the way through this video, I do have a beginner's guide that goes over more than base building. But um, this video was long enough on its own, so we're just going to make this a base building video. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate that you took the time out of your day to sit here and listen to me talk about base building in Rust. Now, get into the game, build a base, get raided, and then get drunk and drink your sorrows away. Yes, that's right. When I drink, I get drunk before I start drinking away my sorrows. And that's what you should do, too, because that... It's how you get into Alcoholics Anonymous. Thank you for watching, and until next time, peace.